Hey everybody, in this video we're going to do a quick overview of how to use Faceware Studio with MetaHumans in Unreal Engine. Now the first thing to know is that the documentation for this is on the Faceware website. You'll want to go to supportfacewaretech.com, MetaHumans. In there, make sure that you download all of the requirements. So you'll need Faceware Studio, and there's a link to that. You'll need the Glassbox Blueprint Motion Logic. This download is a set of files that will go into your Unreal Engine project that maps the output from Faceware Studio onto MetaHumans. Then, of course, you'll need the Glassbox Tech plugin itself. It's a live client plugin. You can download that here. Uh, when you get your license for uh, Faceware Studio, you should also get a license code for this plugin. So uh, this plugin also has a uh, short trial that you can use it for if uh, you haven't gotten your licenses yet. Uh, you'll also be able to uh, use the Epic MetaHuman sample scene. In this video, we're actually going to use a custom MetaHuman, so this is not strictly required. You could have a new project with your own custom MetaHuman to use this. And if you'd like, you can use a sample uh, facial performance from Faceware. I'm going to use my own clip in this video. So uh, some of the things that you'll want to set up once you've got everything installed is that you'll want to make sure you have an Unreal Engine project already and that you've got your MetaHumans loaded in there. So in my case, I've got this uh, MetaHuman, a female hero. She's all set to go. And that was just a straight install from uh, Quixel Bridge or an export from Quixel Bridge into my project. And then you're also going to need this motion logic directory. So when you download this uh, MetaHuman Blueprint motion logic, you'll get a uh, file that uh, unzips. And inside that, you'll see a content folder and then motion logic. So we're going to copy this motion logic folder into the content folder of your project and this provides all the mappings between the glass box link as well as all the data that's coming in from faceware studio onto metahumans so the next thing we want to do is make sure we get faceware running and transmitting data so this is what faceware studio looks like when you start it up i might ask you to log in for the first time i'm already logged in and that authenticates my license you have two options on your input type. You can either use live or media. Now, just to show you how live works, I have a ATEM Mini that's uh, got a video camera on it. And so I can choose my Blackmagic design input, which is my ATEM Mini. And now I should, there we are. There's my feed directly from the ATEM Mini. Uh, I'm good with this rotation, and I could use this as my facial performance capture. Uh, of course, I'm a little bit small, far away with this camera, and uh, I have a pre-recorded file. So instead of live, I'm going to use media. The process is the same regardless of what your source is, live or media. So uh, in this case, just to have a little more predictability, I'm going to go ahead with media. I'll select a file. In this case, I'll use a video. You can also use an image sequence. And with the video, I have a little MP4 here recorded with a little Sony DSLR. And this is the video just uh, saying, hey, you should try this. All right, so there's my video. Now, of course, there's a little bit of uh, before and after. This is the sh video straight off of the camera. So let's uh, make sure we clip this down. A couple things that I did deliberately here is one, I held a neutral uh, pose face so that uh, I could get a, a, a clean map between my neutral face to the neutral model in Faceware Studio. Um, Let's take a look at this a little bit better. We have some image rotations available here. Uh, you can experiment with these. I did 90 degrees and, well, I ended up upside down. So I'll use 270 for this. And of course, there's a 180 in between that. Uh, next, I'm just going to scrub through my video here and make sure I get rid of, you know, this little bit of uh, motion at the beginning until I get into place. And uh, then I have my neutral pose and a blink. And I say my line and I blink again. Now, for a later video, I'll be using those blinks as a means of synchronizing the uh, video with the uh, data in Unreal Engine. But for now, the main thing I want is to get to where I have my neutral pose. And I'll trim out everything from the beginning by just sliding this over. And then same thing, I just want this performance up till that uh, final blink. That's good enough. And I'll take this and clip to the end of the clip. 
So now I've got this and I can hit play and I'll just loop from that neutral pose on. Now we're not tracking yet because we haven't calibrated to the neutral pose. So let me hit pause and find this uh, neutral pose and click on calibrate. And at this point, Faceware Studio begins tracking. Now I can uh, look at a better angle at this guy by uh, clicking and dragging. And there we go. So now we've got, you know, kind of a, a little bit more of a matching angle. Faceware Studio is tracking the position of eyes, eyebrows, nose, flaring of the nose, and um, mouth pose. And now when I hit play, this will automatically be transposed onto the Faceware model. So you can see how that works. All right, so we've got our facial performance happening there. Now we want to be able to stream this out to Unreal Engine, and that's done over uh, Ethernet IP, internal actually, but it's over uh, uh, basically a networking uh, internet protocol. So right now we're streaming out of port 802. Now any program on this computer will be able to see this data streaming if it tunes into port 802 on the standard IP address for local inside the current machine is 127.0.0.1. And we'll make sure that um, we have that set up when we get over to the Unreal Engine side to listen to this feed. Now, one thing that you'll want to make sure of is that I believe the default for Faceware Studio is for a legacy control schema. And uh, we're going to be using standard instead. So make sure you have standard selected and make sure your stream client is switched on. So there we go, we've got a stream light, and so this data is playing and looping and it's transmitting uh, over on port 802 right now. So any program that wants to tune in to port 802 on this computer will get this data. So let's get this in uh, place on Unreal Engine. So I'll go to Unreal, and I have an empty level here. So I first want to set up a custom version of my MetaHuman that's set up to listen to Faceware Studio. So I go into my MetaHumans folder. I'm going to use Hero 1. And here is the blueprint that is my complete MetaHuman that came in from Quixel Bridge. So I'm going to make a copy of this or a child of it. It's going to inherit all of the built-in blueprints but allow us to add more without disrupting what the original was. So we're just going to right-click choose Create Child Blueprint Class, and then we'll give this a name. In this case, I'm just going to call it FW Child as a suffix, and that'll clue me into the fact that this is my faceware child for this uh, blueprint. All right, so I'll go ahead and drag this character out into the scene and zoom in on her a little bit. Alt-click, Alt-Middle-Mouse drag, and so we can see her face. I didn't like the lighting, so I just pulled a rectangular light in front of her to use as a fill light and make it so we could see her face a little bit better. Okay, so our MetaHuman is here, and if I click on her in the scene, I can see all the components that are built in. And what I need to do is add a, a faceware component to this so that we can listen in to the uh, faceware data that's being transmitted. So I'll just click on Add Component, and I'll search for faceware. And I just typed in the word face, and there's Faceware Live. And so now that component has been added to this uh, actor. And this is the component that tunes into the Faceware Studio data feed on port 802. Now, we'll need to specifically set up the face of this character to listen into the Faceware data. So we'll click on the face. And we'll need to change the animation mode. We're going to stick with animation blueprint, but we want to use the uh, Faceware blueprint that'll receive the data from Studio. So I'll just click on Anim class, type in FW this time for Faceware, and that should give us this ABP uh, Faceware MetaHuman body. We're doing the face, so we want this face. Now these are some of the components that were added in the Motion Logic folder here that was uh, imported from our previous download. So if you don't see the Faceware Live component when you try to add component, or you don't see the ABP FW MetaHuman face uh, when you're trying to add the animation class, it's probably because you haven't added this motion logic yet. So now the MetaHuman is set up with all the motion logic. We just need to make sure that our Glassbox plugin is active. So we'll just go to Window and choose, I'm sorry, Edit Plugins. 
And in here, we'll just want to make sure we look for live. And there is live client for Unreal. I already have this enabled. If you don't, you just make sure you uh, have installed it and it shows up and then you enable it. Of course, instructions for that are going to be on the Glassware website where you download this from. So I've got it enabled, so I'm all good there. So now we're ready to uh, go ahead and stream that data. All we have to do is go ahead. Let's I'm going to choose simulate so that we keep our viewport and our editor here and hit play. And in theory, there we go. The face where data is being streamed in from that blank face. And there is the information. So let's see if I can zoom in on here, get her face, just put it off to the side of the screen. And again, I can just open this up and bring this over to the half. And now you can see the motions that are happening on this face are now also happening on this face. So that's how to set that up. I hope this helps. Until next time, have fun.